Richard, Richard, wake up. Where is that red scarf, Matthew? Come on, I need you to wake up. Hey! Ali? Ali, my ear! How do you feel? Hot. The wound is boiling your blood. We need to get you someplace dry and cool so you can heal. Ali, they shackled us. I will die here. Calm down. You'll only make things worse. Don't give up. We will get out of here. And what then? We'll find Father. He'll know what to do. I heard them say that he's with the King in Winchester. Then that's where we'll go. You'll see. He'll make things right again. Don't give up. We will get out of here. I don't know. Richard. How did you free yourself before? I don't know. When they put me here, they had the shackles fitted to my ankles. But today, I somehow managed to slip through. These three weeks must have made me very determined. Yes, and very thin. What were you thinking? King, charging William like that. I had to protect you. That was very brave of you. I don't know. It was. Father will be proud when you tell him. Richard, throw me that horseshoe. It's not hard enough to break the chain. I already tried. I'll think of something. Just give it to me. So there are no weapons here, and no sign of my red scarf. Richard. Do you think it might break like this? It's not hard enough to break the chain. I already tried. you for? Shh. You'll see. It's too high. I'm chained to a post. I can't reach it. If only it was closer.
open yours next. Can you stand? I'll try. Good. Then wait here. I'll find us a way to get out of here. Let's take his horse. Yes. Good idea. But first we need the weapons Matthew hid for us. Nothing. Maybe Matthew meant the other gate. bit short for my taste. The knights weren't prepared and the peasants scattered like chicken. What I wouldn't do for a good kill right now. Guess you'll have to wait. Bloody. I found it. Just can't shake Matthew's it. Matthew's piece of cloth. Please, take us away from here. Careful! He doesn't seem to like that. Oi! Don't you dare touch William's horse! <gasps> You're not getting away like that. that they could catch up with us urged me to ride onward. It rained relentlessly. After a while, Richard's moaning got weaker, but I did not dare look back, for I feared to see William Hamley right at our heels. I forced the horse to go faster, hoping that my brother would not succumb to his wounds. We headed toward Winchester, the king would make things right if we explained them to him. He had to. 
It wasn't long until Richard almost fell off the horse. Touching his forehead, I realized he had a high fever. His mutilated ear was red, hot, and swollen. A sound startled me. From the thicket of the forest emerged a woman. I was ready to draw the dagger that was flush against my forearm. I asked her to give us her name. This was her forest, she said, so we should be the ones introducing ourselves. I proclaimed that I was the daughter of the Earl of Shiring, traveling with my brother. I can tell your nobility by your manners. She smiled and revealed in turn that she was the wife of the local verderer. Seeing Richard's ear, she said that he needed help. Luckily, their hut was nearby. She offered us food, shelter, and care. We followed her to the hut. It was further than she had led us to believe. There, I helped my brother off the horse and let the woman take the horse's reins. The hut was rather barren, with few furnishings. It was almost as cold as outside, and there was no sign of her husband. Richard dropped onto one of the creaky stools. The woman lit a fire, which came alive with a crackle and gave out a warming glow. I raised my voice and repeated more urgently that if we didn't act right now, Richard might die. At my words, the woman seemed to wake up from her absent-mindedness. She nodded towards the fire. There was a sound outside, but she distracted my attention by turning to Richard. She started to explain that to close a wound, one must gently press a hot piece of metal against the flesh. This will stop demons and bad smells from entering the body. The woman's eyes kept darting to the door, so I turned my head to see what it was she was looking for. The moment after I'd turned my head, my own knife was pointing at my face. She'd noticed the dagger in my sleeve and had yanked it out before I knew what was happening. She apologized. It's a tough world and it's eat or be eaten. There was another noise outside. He's here, she said. I waited for the moment her eyes were on the door again, then I dashed towards Richard, but a hand grabbed my wrist. It was too big and rough to be hers. The man threw me aside and I landed hard on the floor. My head spun. He examined us and our weapons and broke into laughter. He stepped closer to reach for Richard's sword, but his wife interrupted. We can't sell that. Everyone would know who that sword belonged to. The man grunted in agreement and turned to leave. Before she followed him, she dropped my dagger. Burn out your brother's wound with this, she said, and disappeared. We heard the, the fire was still burning. We had no other choice but to trust the word of the outlaw. The heated dagger trembled in my hands. Do it, Ali, I can take it. Richard tried to sound brave. A horrible hissing sound and the smell of burnt flesh filled the hut when the blade touched his ear. But it seemed to work. For a few hours, I guarded the door while Richard slept, but soon I fell asleep too. We walked for two more days with only brief rests in between, but we finally arrived at the city gates of Winchester. Richard was weak. But at least we were still together, and we were sure that together we would find a way to escape this nightmare.